From our forests and prairies to our lakes and rivers, Wisconsin's natural areas are under attack from plant and animal villains. Think these vines with their bright fruits look beautiful climbing up the trees? Think again. This strangler, also known as the oriental bittersweet vine, is capable of strangling trees or even causing them to fall over. What about this little mollusk? It can't be a problem, can it? Turns out it's a huge problem. In Wisconsin's lakes, zebra mussels not only impact other species, they also clog water intake pipes, which costs utilities millions of dollars each year. These are just two examples of the villains known as invasive species which are causing problems here in Wisconsin. Species are considered invasive if they originated outside of the area they are in now, if they are spreading or growing rapidly in their new area, and if they cause or have the potential to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. But these invaders aren't villains everywhere. They're problematic because of where they are, not because of what they are. Here's why. When a species like this purple berry bush has been in a place for a long time, it has had time to adapt to its environment and to the other species around it. At the same time, those other species have adapted to that environment, to the purple berry bush, and to each other. When species like these have been living together for a long time, there are checks and balances that prevent any given species from dominating the environment. Examples of checks and balances include limiting factors, Limiting factors are things in the environment, like the amount of sunlight and precipitation, the air temperature, predators, and geographic features that limit how much a species can grow or how far it can spread. So our villains in Wisconsin actually don't cause problems where they're from originally, thanks to checks and balances like limiting factors. But because the combination of checks and balances in one place is always different from the combination in another place, there's always a chance that a species will become invasive in a new place. By now, you might be wondering how we get invasive species in Wisconsin. Well, usually invasive species move just like other species. They move through emigration, like this beaver looking for some new territory. They move by seed dispersal, like these milkweed seeds blowing away from their parent plant. And sometimes they hitchhike, like the insect eggs that will get moved in this firewood, or like the sticky burrs that get stuck on you when you walk through the woods. Invasive species spread in all of these ways, but typically they get help from humans to move much farther than they would be able to move on their own. Take our strangler, Oriental Bittersweet. Humans intentionally brought it to the United States from Asia because it has beautiful red fruits that people like to see growing in their yards. On its own, it wouldn't have been able to get that far. But now that it's here, it's spreading by one of the methods we just talked about, seed dispersal. Birds love to eat the fruits, and when birds fly to nearby natural areas, they can spread the seeds from the fruit. Often, when bittersweet ends up in natural areas, the limiting factors of those natural areas can't restrict its growth. So it keeps growing and spreading and growing some more until it strangles the trees or gets so heavy in the tops of the trees that the trees fall over. Even though humans move a lot of species around the world on purpose, sometimes they don't realize that they're moving species. Zebra mussels, originally from the Black and Caspian Seas, traveled to the Great Lakes region in water inside the tanks of ocean-going ships coming from Europe. As ships released this water when they arrived at their destination, the zebra mussels were released into a new home. And now, zebra mussels have found lots of safe places to grow, including on the inside of water intake pipes. They cause problems by clogging pipes and other infrastructure, not to mention the damage they cause to the lake's other living things. The checks and balances in these new lakes have failed to keep the zebra mussels from causing problems. So what's the big deal? Well, here are three things to think about. In Wisconsin, invasive species cause a lot of damage to our environment. When they crowd out native species, they reduce habitat for lots of other plants and animals and can also negatively impact the soil and nearby lakes or rivers. Invasive species also come with high economic costs. In Wisconsin, we need to manage invasive species that damage our natural areas and that damage the systems we rely on to get clean water and food. This costs millions of dollars each year. Some invasive species are also dangerous to human health. This villain is the burner, also known as wild parsnip. Its sap has chemicals that react with sunlight, and if you get the sap on your skin, the reaction can cause burns. Yikes! 
So whether you're concerned about your favorite natural area, about the economic cost of managing invasive species, or about your own health, you should be concerned about the villainous plants and animals invading our state. To learn more about invasive species in Wisconsin, and to find out how you can help, visit the Wisconsin First Detector Network.